Good morning. Happy New Year. I am a minute or so early, so I'm just going to give it a second or two here to kind of give people a chance to join in, and we will get started. I hope everyone had a lovely holiday um, and that you had some time to relax and kind of get ready and start the new year off. Um, I'm going to go grab something really quickly that I left in the other room and I will be right back. Right, there we go I wanted to grab my <clears throat> um, this is my 05 uh, mechanical pencil I have my 7 here accidentally and while I like it it's a little heavier on the shading and I wanted to lighten that up a little bit all right so it is 1130 we are going to dive in and get started here um, let's see grab a few tiles and we are gonna get started um, I wanted to talk for a minute about two things I am going you may see me do here and there over the next uh, little bit of time here so I kind of wanted to share them with you so you know what I'm talking about um, let's see the first of which is this fragment of your imagination if you are not familiar with um, with uh, seven forest five rivers um, it is a wonderful group um, it's or organized by a couple of good friends of mine um, and they frequently do little challenges they are um, they put together the inktober and um, a bunch of other little challenges that we can use in our daily Zentangle practice. And this is one that they put together for the month of January. Um, and I am doing this one. And it's just working with reticula and fragments. And I will put the link if anybody is interested in checking this out. But you may see this on my Instagram or on my Facebook as I work my way through it. Um, so like yesterday was um, January 1st and we did this little Z fragment um, that brings me to my second thing that I'm going to be doing which is my tangle a day calendar um, I considered doing the whole thing live but I decided that that would be a lot to do every day for a year so um, I'm just gonna do it live when I feel like it so <laughs> um, you may see this pop up here and there throughout the years but I combined the two um, I did my first day and you notice there's no shading or anything here because I've decided that what I'm going to do is each week I'm going to add a um, <clears throat> kind of a theme something that's cohesive and goes across at least a three page possibly even the six day spread um, and with this for this one I chose flux because it's my mac and cheese tangle and at the end of the week I'll go back and I'll do all my shading if I decide to bring in any color I'll do it then and I'll add um, little cohesive pieces that make it um, kind of all work together so um, and then I'll be posting these every once in a while to just kind of see what I'm doing and to keep me you know motivated and on track to, to get it finished so that's the second thing that I'm working on um, this year that I just started with. So um, what I am doing is for this fragment piece is I am going to add in my my little fragment to my calendar for the first month. I figure that'll be a nice way to really get me started and keep me focused on working on this right from the start. So. Just a couple of things you might see pop up here and there um, throughout the year. I have decided I'm going to continue doing the Facebook Lives 
through, um, I guess I'm going to say through the year. So I may branch out. I haven't decided yet, but I'm toying with the idea of branching out away from officials on Tangled Hot or our patterns um, shortly uh, because I've already worked my way through a good chunk of them. Um, but I think that uh, focusing on one pattern every week is a really good way to um, kind of work. I went and got this and I'm out of lead in it anyway. Oh well. So I guess I'm going to use my um, I'll just use this one. My mechanical pencil, my dots, my border. And we'll go from there. Um, I meant to have my calendar out with my upcoming classes by the beginning of the year, but I was a slacker, so that didn't happen. Um, it will be soon. I do have some fun classes coming up soon, so I hope that you check those out. All right, so Opus. Opus is a pattern that I have never really fallen in love with, and I've tried. I really, really have. Um, it's just never been one that, that really that I really had any kind of love affair with. So um, we're going to start here. I'm going to draw it like this. Um, this is my really bad. Um, I say that because I think it's important that everybody realizes that even those of us that tangle regularly and do this as a living um, struggle with our own, our own pieces from time to time. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make kind of this curly little fescue loop. And it's just got kind of like a teardrop shape on the edge there. I'm going to add another one. And then I'm going to make one that's kind of here at the top, sort of. And then I'm going to come up from the other side. And if you notice, I start on that, that little stem. I, I want it to, um, I always like to start my lines not right here because you get these little pen, like, I don't know, not really divots. That's not really the right word. But um, you get these little spots where your ink kind of bleeds and it kind of does, I don't know, a little funky thing if you start it right at the edge. So I like to go in and start from lower in my line to kind of make it flow a little nicer. Okay, so once I have that done, um, I can leave these open or I can color them in. When you usually see it, um, it's usually colored in. So since this is the first pattern, I'm going to draw it that way. But I do want to point out that leaving these open does give it a different look. And that's part of what we what I like to talk about on these is the way you can change up a pattern and give it a different look. Okay. So I'm coloring these in. And now I'm going to add an aura. Okay. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to come fairly close. I'm going to loop it around and it's giving me these these fun little extra shapes that are getting built in right like these little these almost mimic these and depending on how you draw your opus will determine the shapes of these little um, negative spaces When you draw an aura, you get a really, um, a different look depending on how closely you, um, <clears throat> you follow. Like if you try and make it a very distinct, very, um, measured aura, you will get a much different, a more formal look than if you just kind of wing it the way that I did here. Okay, this tends to be how I draw it. Often you will see opus with a tipple background, and as my 
um, those of you that tangle regularly know tipple is just a whole bunch of orbs. We use orbs instead of circles because it's a little less intimidating. Um, but you just kind of fill in the background with these little orbs or really, as you can see here, any other pattern that you might want to use. Okay. So I am making sure to fill in my negative spaces too. I used Opus today, even though I said it's not one I've ever fallen in love with, because I think it's really important that um, we don't write off patterns, because on different times, or different days and different times, we may like patterns more than we have in the past. And, um, you know, it never hurts to revisit or try a pattern again um, that maybe you didn't like before. But at the same time, if a pattern gives you stress or anxiety and you never love it, it is okay to just simply not use it. There are so many patterns out there that we don't have to use patterns we don't love. Um, but again, like I said, it never hurts to revisit it. And I often say that if you don't like a pattern, sometimes you should just ask somebody else to show you how they draw it. Um, I happen to know for a fact that this is my friend Sonia Yancer's favorite, or one of my, her favorite patterns, and um, <clears throat> I love her art, and she and I joke often that we're twinsies in many, many things, so I always feel like I must be missing something on this pattern, that I don't love it, um, because she has also shown me how to draw several other of her favorite patterns that I then went on to, to have love affairs with. So I always try it. <clears throat> um, and I thought that it would be a great one to push myself out of my comfort zone with and start the year. I see lots of my regular people are joining this morning so I'm glad to see all of you and I see some new faces as well I hope everyone is having a wonderful start to your new year all right so I am not going to finish filling this in with a bunch of circles a bunch of little orbs because I know that you can do that on your own but I wanted to get enough on here that I can shade it and show you how adding shading to this so I'm adding it right along this side right I'm mean, just going right over all these little bubbles right and I'm just doing one side and then I'm going to catch this little area right here on these and then I'm going to come in with my tortillon and I'm just going to soften it a little bit and let it cast a shadow and give it some depth. So I want a little bit here too. You can always add more graphite. I always tell people it's okay to go light because you can always layer graphite, add some more. And I do kind of like it more with um, less background. So there we go. That is the start of this, um, this little opus, right? Um, I have a couple examples that I, that I kind of started to play with I didn't do a ton um, because I wanted to show you the um, the Tangle a Day calendar and talk about the fragments and things like that today as well. Um, so I didn't want to fill things up too much. I usually do try and keep these at a half an hour, but it doesn't usually happen. So this is Opus again, um, and this just has a minor variation. As you can see with this, I just added a couple additional lines. So I added auras to my opus to just kind of add a little bit more interest. And then this, this one I don't think really counts as a variation, but I did want to show that you can use a different pattern in your background. Um, this is one of the ways that I do actually really like to use opus. Um, I used, I like to use it as a string. So 
um, you can see here, here's my opus, right? And then I just filled each section with a different pattern. And then I added my shading. Okay. So, some variations. I'll put in my little dots on my border. I don't feel like I need to demonstrate how to use it as a string. I think just showing you and kind of pointing out that it's a good it's a good way to use it as a string um, is always always a good idea. Um, but one of the, so now I'm going to do it. I I find I I like to do it on a diagonal. I like it to go across my tile. Um, so I'm going to do this now. I am going to, because I like to show you um, variations, I'm going to come up here. I'm actually going to create, instead of just a line, I'm creating like this Mooka-esque kind of little loop. I'm going to come in. I'm going to add another one. Right, so I'm using the same concept, right? And I'm just bringing it so that it start kind of looks like a little vine. And this is a, a pattern that I use a lot in a lot of different, a lot of different ways. Okay, so you can see how I've used the same, the same swirls that we started with in. Our standard, that's not our standard opus. What did I do with it? I lose stuff all the time. Oh, there it is. All right, so in this one, right? So I've made the same, same three swirls. I'm going to come up. I'm going to do another one, right, on the other side. So I've got these Mooka E fronds that I'm building on. purposely trying to draw it fairly similar to this one because I want you to be able to see how doing this will change the change the um, the appearance of it with only some minor um, tweaks okay um, hang on one second all right I want to swap out this pen this pen's dragging a little bit I was pretty rough on it yesterday so these don't actually have these little mooka or these little fescue kind of raindrops to them. They have more of a, just a, an orby kind of thing. So maybe I want to mix this up a little bit. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add a little orb in each of these kind of loops that I have here, like a little cradle. So it looks like a little orb is kind of holding that little or looks kind of like a little hand or a little little shelf for these little orbs and you can color them in if you want to I like to and leave a little little highlight right Okay, so now I'm going to come in and I am going to add in an aura and I'm going to pay really close attention this time and I'm going to try and keep my pen evenly spaced as I go around and I create this aura. So by paying attention to the distance a little jittery this morning. I haven't had a lot of caffeine. So my lines aren't necessarily as smooth as I might normally want them to be. But you can see how I turn my tile as I go. 
And I'm really just paying attention to trying to keep it at the same distance, right? Because by varying that aura, the width of that aura, I can get a different look. So by doing a nice little skinny aura around these, it looks a lot different than the other one that I do, did a little while ago. Okay. And it's never going to be perfect. I'm always going to have little wiggles and little smooshes or whatever it is you want to call it. Right? There we go. So now, the two look different, right? Similar, but different. I could then, if I wanted to, come in and do a, a different aura. I could do a secondary aura. So maybe we'll do that, where I leave a bigger space. And I aura that. At least as much as I can. You can see I'm not being as true to my aura as I was on the first part. There we go. So now I've, I've got these little spaces again. Right, which are super fun and are great are a great place to add those little pieces that maybe tie it into something else. So um, this time instead of doing a whole bunch of orbs, I'm going to shade the background, but I'm also going to use um, some of these negative spaces to add in um, some more of these little black orbs, little black pearls that I've got going on. So it's the same pattern, but it looks different this time. Um, and it's not so dramatically different. Like sometimes I do patterns and they're so um, so different that they barely even look like the same pattern. Um, and I find that I struggle to do that a lot with Opus. But I do try and find new ways to use it. So um, we're going to talk about that in a minute or two. So what all I'm doing here is I'm adding graphite on the outside of that second aura. And it's just a little, little soft pencil line. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to soften it. And then I'm going to drag that graphite out to my border. So sometimes you don't have to put in a complicated background just by using a little bit of shading technique and a little bit of pencil you can add in a background with minimal effort. Don't, like, don't necessarily want a hard line there so I'm just going to come back in and continue to soften that. Right, and then just drag until it lightens up. So there we go. So now these two look similar, but different. Okay, so that's just one variation we can do with this. Um, another thing we can do with them, obviously we can use it as a border. We can use it, um, so you know, to frame your tile. Um, we can make it smaller, we can make it bigger, we can make a whole bunch of little opuses. We can stack them together. Um, I am going to make a 
spiral as my string. Just kind of this little offset spiral. Because I don't want to have to, you know, um, spend a ton of time here. Um, once I get an idea that hopefully you can take and run with. I would rather give you more ideas and let you um, let you play with them. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to start in this section and I'm going to make an opus. It does not have to have just these three little loops. You could do, you know, four or six or or you could do less. You could do two or three. So I'm gonna, I like to come in and I like to kind of make sure that that little teardrop shape, that little fescue thing is there. I'm going to now make a dot. And you don't have to. I like to divide them though. Um, you could actually make them connect. And I have one that's sort of finished that I'll show you. If it's easier for you to go one side than the other, you can do that as well. I find that sometimes when I'm making it curve, that that helps me. Okay. And then I'm going to put another dot there because I'm I'm trying to break this up and then I know I'm not going to be able to see this part, that it's going to go off the edge, but I do want that hint of it there. Okay. Um, and then again, so curve, curve, curve. So this one would actually curve and finish off right about there. And that's the end of this one. Okay. So then I put my dot, and then this one would curve up. You can see my little extra piece is kind of off to the side there. And it, if you remember, I showed you before a nice way to do this when you're, you know, you're doing these um, off the edge kind of drawings is if you're not quite sure, you know, where things are going to go, it's okay to lay the back of a tile or a piece of scrap paper down and start drawing. So let's see. So this one's going to come up like that. And then the other one will come off the side here. And then I would come up here, and that's not quite as even as I wanted it to be, but it's pretty close. And, you know, I can work with that. Okay. Doesn't have to be exact. Just kind of play with it and fill in this space. And they're just kind of floating, you know, right now. They don't, they're not really connected to anything, but that's okay. Do another one. And I like to kind of add in these, these skeletons, these structures to start with. Before I do all of the auras and everything. I like to do those all at once when I do it in a spiral like this. And then I'm going to finish with that dot. Okay. So now I have it like this. So now I'm going to come back and I'm going to add my auras. And you can see I'm going over my little pencil line because I'm not really concerned with it being there. It's a guideline to kind of get me to keep everything sort of where I wanted it. And now I have this little dot, so what do I want to do with it? I can encompass that in a an aura as well. So I'm just kind of auraing all the way around stuff. And it will fill in my space quite nicely. That's the beauty of when you add auras to stuff. You 
fill in lots of space. So we're going to add another one right there, just because I missed it. There. And this gives us a very different look, but it's the same pattern. And it's smaller, and it's a little squishier, and it's not as precise. But when we see something drawn one way all the time, we don't often think to do it in a different way. Okay, so now I have a lot of negative space here. I can come in and fill that in with anything that I'd like. So if I were going to fill it in with orbs, I would just fill in my negative space with orbs. And I would just fill in all the little pieces, right? And you know, these little details where you actually make sure you get all the little spots are what tend to make it look more finished. So while I'm kind of speeding through this, because on a live I don't have the ability to speed up my camera, so, you know, mine's a little sloppy, and that's okay. Um, if I was doing this for, um, you know, for relaxation purposes, if I was doing this as part of my daily Zentangle practice, if I was doing this in a, a piece I wanted to be finished, um, I would go slower, and I would be more precise, because focusing on that line really diving in and, you know, paying attention. I'm going to slow down for a minute and talk about this. Paying attention to the, the way my, my orbs, my, my lines are formed is part of the meditative part of tangling. It's part of that soothing relaxation piece. And it will give you a more finished, more pleasing image as well. So while I rush through stuff to give you ideas on Saturday mornings, please know that when I do tangle for myself, I really focus on my process. I really pay attention to enjoying making all these little teeny tiny circles or teeny tiny lines. So you can see there how cool this, this looks as it comes together. You know, it's got this fun pattern going on in the background, <clears throat> and there's a lot of energy to it. So I really want, you know, really hope that you will take it and kind of play with it in some different ways. I'm not going to finish this one up either, because again, there's a lot to, to just kind of finish up. <clears throat> but I, and I do want to show you um, a couple other real quick little ideas. All right, so I'm drawing in my border. <clears throat> one thing before I, I actually jump away from this one, I talked about using it as a border, um, and I meant to say when I did this, um, this border, or the way I added this in, um, in those ribbons of the spiral, would be how you would use it <clears throat> in a border. You would just lay out your border and you would do a series of opus. Okay. So I wanted to talk about what if it wasn't, what if it wasn't curved? What if it wasn't rounded? What if we went, what if we squared it off? So what if instead of making a swirl, what if I made something kind of angular? So really, these are swirls. They're just not round swirls. Okay. 
and this starts to take on a very Tim Burton Nightmare Before Christmas um, Beetlejuice kind of look right just by making it spiky and sharp okay so now I'm gonna do the same thing I'm going to add an aura And I like when I mess up on camera. I think it's so important um, that people see that it doesn't matter how long you've been doing this, especially if you're not paying attention to what you're doing, you can always go off in a different direction than you meant to. And I say that because I don't know if you noticed or not, but when I was making my aura, and I'll point it out in a minute, um, I went in the wrong direction. But I just finished it off, and honestly, it's really not all that noticeable. Okay, but right here, instead of going around, I came down. So all I did is I came back in and I squared it off. So um, this has a very different look, right? And so what might be fun with this would be to add in some striping in the background. And I would come in and I would, um, you know, I'm just kind of making sure that I hit all of those little negative spaces that I have. Right? Because that's what makes it work, is making sure that you put any patterns you have in those little negative spaces. Okay? <clears throat> so, I would come back in um, if I was going to finish this up. Um, let's see here, looking for a bigger, fatter pen. I don't have my graphic handy. Um, let's see, Come on here. I have to have it. I know it's, there it is. I knew it was here somewhere. So now I could come in and I could blacken in some of the behind really to kind of feed off of that graphic um, Tim Burton-esque kind of feel that I was going for with this pattern. And enjoy your coloring. You know, there's something really, really satisfying about watching white paper take on ink and change, right? Like I said, I often rush through this when we're when we're playing with them, and um, I just kind of throw ideas up here, and which is the reason that I do the pattern sheets later. I want you to see what they look like when they're finished. Um, but I think that it's more beneficial to give you a bunch of little ideas to play with than to just, you know, do one or two. And then everybody thinks that they need to draw the pattern the same way. So um, by giving you some ideas, I hope that I spark your imagination. <clears throat> And that you think of some fun ways to play with it. And remember, I say this all the time in my classes. And if you've been in any of my classes, especially my, my basic um, tangle classes, don't be afraid to play with your, your tiles. Don't be afraid to play with your patterns. Um, it's just paper. It really is just paper. It's wonderful that we have beautiful paper we can work on, that we're not, you know, trying to make do with 
scraps of tree bark, although tangling on tree bark is super fun, and if you haven't tried it, you should. Um, you know, and a stick, what we are, we are lucky enough to have really, really lovely paper to play with, but it is still just paper. And it is okay to have a sketchbook that you just play with ideas, that you take a tangle, and that you go in 57 different different ways to see what you can do with it. So there it is. Um, so there's this one with um, kind of an abstract, sketchy, stripey background. I would shade it um, the same way. So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to add some some shadows on one side you know I don't want to get carried away and I did put pencil over my black though I usually try and avoid doing that I don't like how shiny it gets but so I'm just not really gonna um, blend it too much on the black but I'm just gonna soften those lines so you can kind of see that little drop shadow that I've got going on there, right? Um, maybe come in here. I'll add a little there as well. Okay, so that looks pretty different than any of the ones we've done before, but it is just the same pattern. Okay. Um, so there's those. Um, I do want to show you how I do, um, how I do my, my florally with this because I think that's kind of just something that I often do is I try and turn it into an organic, something that could be included in a garden. Um, I find that this looks a lot like a tree, um, or a stem, so I use it that way a lot. But if I were going to try and turn it into an actual flower, I would kind of make my orb in the center. I'm going to put a little spiral in there just to make it cute. Okay. And now I'm going to make some, and I'm adding a ball this time instead of instead of a, um, what do you call it, instead of like a raindrop, I'm adding like a little, a little bubble on the end. And once I've made one, I'm going to go in the other direction, I'm going to flip my tile and I'm going to kind of try, not necessarily to mirror it, but to go, um, to go opposite, okay? Because I don't necessarily have a ton of space, right? Because I tend to make my bubbles kind of wide. Not my bubbles, my little, my little fronds here kind of wide. So I wanted to be sure that I'm going to be able to get at least four. And you can play with this in whatever direction you want. I find that my top one... My top one, I always want to come straight up, but it really can't because of the way it's made. So you can either make two or you can have it kind of curved to another side, right? So once that's done, I'm going to come in and I am going to make my aura. I'm going to move on and do my next petal, my next little flower petal. Turn and go on to the next one. And depending on how you draw your curly cues, determines how much of that negative space that you're getting, right? So. With these bubbles, I have more kind of a rounded little fluffy shape than I did with the others, where it was kind of stretched out and looked more tree-like. Okay, so I have 
I have like the, these four little petals here, right? So that's not enough for a flower, although it makes a cool shape. But I want it to be a flower. So I'm going to come in in my negative space and I'm going to add in another one. And I'm paying attention. I don't really want it to go past these and I'm starting lower. So I want to try and keep it in the same if there was a circle around it, I want to keep it in the same enclosed space. And if it helps, you can always draw an orb as a string. Okay, so this one, this is all going to be behind this frond, so I'm not going to draw it. I'm going to come up here, and there's my little bubble there and there. And then I'm going to do one there. So I'm adding another four kind of on the in between. And sometimes they'll fit in nicer. And you could actually do this before you draw your auras. But I find that I like it, like to do it after because I like the layered look that I get. Okay. So now I'm going to come in and I'm going to add my aura. And there's probably not a lot of spaces that you can actually reach once you add in this aura. You're going to have like these little negative spaces, but they're going to be really tiny and that's okay. Here I had more room. There we go. So that is my um, so that is my opus flower, and I could come in and if I wanted to accent that it, I wanted it to be a flower, I could just kind of add in a couple of. Um, lines to a little bit of line work to kind of make it look more like a flower also kind of looks like a really curvy curly snowflake and then to shade this I would just kind of shade where things overlap and I you know you don't always need a ton of shading shading does tend to be where the magic happens with some patterns but sometimes you don't need a lot to add in some little pieces right so there we go so I just kind of added a little bit of graphite where stuff overlaps including on my little leaves and then I'm just gonna soften it And there we go. So that's just another fun way to kind of play with a pattern and to make it into something else. So I hope that this has given you some ideas, that you run with some of these concepts, and that you make some really fun stuff. And if nothing else, that you give Opus a try. Like I said, I have never really had a huge love affair with it, though I tried. Um, but even a pattern that I don't love, I can play with every once in a while to just kind of see if my mood has changed, to see if I have new ideas, a new take on it. And I think that um, that is the secret to not getting stuck in a rut. So um, I hope you have fun, and I will see you next week. If you have any suggestions of patterns you would like to see me play with, by all means, feel free to put them in the comments and I will come back and make a list from there. Um, and until then, enjoy playing with Opus.